Hi, my name is Dr. Swayman Singh. Um, I'm a cardiology fellow in the United States. Um, I came to India about two months back uh, because of a family emergency, uh, but I could never get myself to even go across Delhi um, because of the protests that were going on here. And when I was passing by, the pain I saw, I just couldn't get myself to go across and I just had to be stationed here. Since then I've been stationed here. Uh, Five River Heart Association is my organization. We've been having medical camps. We have opened up a library. Uh, we have a living facility for 4,000 females. And basically doing anything and everything to help the people in need here. However, you know, as you guys know what had happened on January 26th, I want to take you back to January 25th. We already knew that there something could go wrong. As there were many things that were happening. There was an attempt to assassinate four of the farm union leaders prior to this date. There seemed to be some things that were set up for this protest to fail. So I can tell you what happened with me. So on 26 January or 26 January, we were all ready. We had a team of 32 ambulances, uh, close to 220 volunteers that were counted. We were supposed to be part of the parade. And we were just there as backup. You know, we thought that there would be already, you know, ambulances and doctors there. We just wanted to be backup. So what happened when we got to Nanglohi Station? People came to us. They're like, "Oh, you know, go across the barricade. People are dying there. You know, people are getting killed there. Uh, people are getting their legs chopped off." And you know, we were shocked. Like, how how can this happen? As the barricade wasn't even broken. But because people were telling us as doctors, we had to take action. So we moved our ambulances across the barricade and the police allowed us to, very kindly, allowed us to go across the barricade. And what was amazing was there was nothing there. Everything was fine. Everything that, that we were being told behind us was fake news. Again, we set up our camp there. And at that time, somehow something went wrong and the police started hitting the protester behind the barricade. It was just one or two police officers that led, and then next thing you know, there's three tractors who want to get across the barricade. Police started firing, um, what are those things called? They fire in the air to break up the crowd, smoke bombs or whatever. But instead of firing it on, you know, up, they fired it at the faces of the people. And the, this face, I couldn't never forget, his face was hit, literally blank, from the side, he had a John Deere tractor. He ran over the barricade after being hit. I think he was confused. That hurt a lot of police officers. So next thing you know, we had to set up a field hospital there where we're treating police officers, injured you know, farmers, CRPF uh, personnel. No doctor from the government was there. No ambulance from the government was there. Our team was suturing up police officers, suturing up these personnel, putting IV lines, injections, and farmers, CRPF police officers, we didn't see any difference. To us, they were all humans as doctors. It was our duty to serve. But what was amazing was, after about an hour, you know, 90 minutes of us doing what we were doing, somebody took notice, and next thing you know, a group of 10 to 15 police officers rushed towards where we were, and these started hitting these two guys with sticks who came from the same side as they were. And hitting them, they started hitting us hit us brutally you know the, the images are shocking you can see some of the videos that were recorded in people who were there sadly we didn't have a camera we didn't have anything to record anything all videos came from people who were there standard bystanders and basically broke three three arms of our guys fractured three arms of doctors hit a guy in the skull literally opened up his skull hit guys in in the leg who have bruises all over their legs. And the one guy was actually holding an ivy pole and we were suturing up a police officer at that time. Then the police officers themselves who were there stopped those guys and ran them off. Those same police officers who were there started crying to us, folded hands, and were apologetic because they didn't know what had happened. But what had happened was pretty clear. There were people on both sides set up to become to aggregate the crowd, to aggregate the police, to aggregate the people one against the other. 
And this had happened, this, we saw this the whole day. I can share a story later, you know, but I just want to keep it brief. And what, we, what was amazing was, the, you know, once the barricades, the, all, all the police officers basically lost their soul at that time. They were like, they were so shell shocked when they saw us getting beat up that they literally gave up the barricade. The barricades basically opened up that time and the farmers got through. What was so amazing, the same people who were behind the barricades, on the other side of the barricades, everybody was walking on the same road. Nobody was hitting each other. Peacefully, they walked across. The same people who were, at that point, were hitting people on the face with, you know, these, these canisters, were literally walking now together. Like nothing had happened. This continued till 10 p.m. We finished our day. All, you know, through this day, there was so much fake news that were being spread. Internet connection was broken. Everybody was confused. The farmers, most of them are not from Delhi. They didn't even know the way. What was the way to get to? Nobody knew the maps of the protest. There was so much confusion. People were, didn't even know which were, which were the right barricades, which was the right road. And they were literally set up to fail. I can tell you great details on what we saw from the front lines because we were at every barricade. Once the barricades were broken, we would go to the next barricade because that, we knew that's where we had to serve. But, but the, the pain was seeing our brothers, our police officers, our CRPF, they didn't even have backup. They didn't even have the support of the doctors. Where were the doctors for them? Where were the ambulances for them? They, even they were set up to fail and die. If we weren't there, so many people would lose their lives that day. So many farmers would lose their lives. Who, where, where, where in a in a developed country can you have a protest without without doctors, without fire, fire, without ambulances? But what I wanna what I wanna tell you now, which is even worse, internet connections were cut. Why? Why were his internet connections cut? I want to answer to that. Where were the ambulances? It created so much chaos, so much confusion. The confusion still stands. Because people don't know what happened. These people who were there for 60 days doing protests peacefully, they don't know what happened. Who are those 200 people who went to the Red Fort at 10 a.m. when the protest was supposed to start at 1 a.m.? Or 1 p.m., I'm sorry. But, but, but I want to tell the international community one thing right now, which is, where, which is the most important thing. People are going to die here. We're being squeezed. Food lines are being cut. Internet connections are being cut. People are going to start dying here. People are not getting their medications. Food lines are being cut. In the name of that, whatever happened at Rudd Fort, everybody's going to be targeted now. I want to tell the international community, if you want us to die, because these people, these old men won't leave. They don't know any better. Are those three bills that much important to you? That they can't be replaced? That you can't just cancel them and then bring them back in about a month? Are they that important to you? The lives of these people who are just asking, they're citizens of this country, all they're asking is cancel the laws for now. Bring them back. Better. But you're willing to kill these people for that? I'm telling you, there's so much stuff going on here. People are going to start dying in one, two, three days. If not today. I'm begging the international community to do something. Wake up. Realize these farmers are not what they were shown on TV. They're confused, man. They're literally confused. Most of them don't even know what happened. There are people sitting in US, Canada, that might know what was this whole Khalistan thing that we don't even know about. The separatist movement, we have no idea. We're all God-loving people. Even us, we treated you can see pictures, you can see my videos. We treated everybody as equal, as we were taught by our God, are taught by our Vaheguru, told, told to us by his Sikhs. Sikh can never be a separatist. Our Guru doesn't teach us to be a separatist. We love our country. India is our country. We, our grandfathers, our forefathers died for this country. The flag is what, for two months, we were giving away our flags, Indian flags to be put on track. All tractors had Indian flags. How can you call these people separatists? How can you call this movement a Sikh movement? This was all pre-planned to... But all I'm saying as a doctor now, I will, compl I will always serve my community. I will always serve the Indian community. I will always serve anywhere in the world. I was there for Black Lives Matter protest. I was there for all protests in America. We were there as doctors to help. 
And whenever in the future, wherever in the world, where humanity is challenged, I will always be there. And I'm just begging to you right now to try to understand, try to realize these old men over here, these old females, these children, they're, they're, they're being played. There's a game that's being played by someone that's deadly and they're ready to kill them. You have limited time. If you don't take action now, I'm telling you it's gonna be too late and you're gonna regret it. These God-loving people were not the ones who were there in the Red Fort. They were not the ones who were putting up that flag. I'm, I'm begging to you, I'm telling you, we're the ones putting up these libraries. We're the ones putting up these medical clinics and these living shelters and serving free food all over the world whenever something goes wrong. These farmers are, good, are literally dying. They're telling you this, that people are trying to sell their land. People are trying to take their land away from them and give it to three people. Try to realize the pain. Try to understand the problem. If you're waiting for people to die before you take action, then trust me, in the next three, four days, there could be help. I'm begging the international community to take action. I'm begging the international media. I'm begging the international politicians. Whenever you needed them, Sikhs were always there. Farmers from India were always there to help. This is your time. Don't let these people down. People will die. I'm telling you, people will die.